Justice for all. Please remain mm -hmm. stand for the security cap mm -hmm. and departure mm -hmm. community and also mm -hmm. the military. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
It is Bridgeville that resides at the center of this, of the flooding and the traffic issues that are McLaughlin run. Without our leadership, our region cannot resolve the problem, and our residents will continue to suffer from those problems. And with that, I look forward to our future progress. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Mr. Tom B, please. Hey, folks. I think you all know, I know yes. a lot of you now. Good in that. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you. And I want to start. I mean, those of you who know me pretty well now know that I kind of have a usual approach, and let's start with the positives. I'd like to thank everyone who was down there from the chief to the fire department and to everyone in public works. And those of you, I know I saw a lot of those faces down there individually. Though it wasn't as bad as before, I kind of take exception. It still wasn't good. Um, some were more at risk than others. But what went well, and you only need to be applauded for, is unless something was different, I didn't hear of a backflow preventer that failed that was initiated prior to Joe's coming on board with Lori. And I commend that because I was witness to it. It worked better than a couple of people who are in my family who are engineers were actually astounded at how well they worked. Um, at the deepest point of the water, which as you well know is my wife's apartment building. Uh, the wall at the end of Jane Way held up. It didn't breach. And um, yeah. I will come back to that because you had next points with these sort of things and improvements. The trash racks worked. The trash racks were excellent. But I think out of all of this, I know personally, we learned some things that we need to address to tighten up. We held back five feet of water, one inch of water got into our buildings. I know what that cost. I know that was engineered. I know an 18 year old kid engineered them. Um, with that, I've identified about five things we need to address immediately to make ours tighter. And I'm not a fool, Mother Nature's going to win this battle someday again. However, with that being said, the trash racks do have some room for improvement. Um, Nick and I talked about it actually that night. DJ and I talked about it as well. There needs to be balusters along the park because the creek finds its way around the current balusters, especially when they're clogged. Then the debris is going to follow soon. We had a couple 30, would you say 30 some foot pieces of tree to be pulled out of the creek that night? I'm just you. I know people who I'm trying to look at anyone who was around there to verify this. Yeah. I know they were, as you all know, we have plenty of video evidence to support this. Um, Tom, was that possibly that tree after the trash rack or not? I don't know. Um, there, were three, there were three. There were three that came down. Okay. And we got them out. I mean, Joe, Joe saw what it took to get them out of there. Um, I fortunately happened to have had a friend who was on site as another property of ours, bought an excavator now, and he yanked them. Uh, it's a good thing he did because at one o'clock in the morning, the second round came down. With it came two other large trees that would have been able to flood. And we would have been over Bower Hill Road uh, long after everyone had gone home. I can promise you that. So the trash racks could be improved upon. The current ones could be raised. I don't know the politics of that. I know you've all fought very hard to get that to happen. But in my opinion, they should be the height of Bower Hill Road, not the height of the ballpark. Because the fear is whether it goes around them or whether the water comes up high enough to get the debris over them. Once it comes down, Bower Hill Bridge is done. It was almost done last Wednesday night. So that is a frankly a huge concern of mine. Um, but that sort of was the positives. I think that all went pretty well. Stuff that I think we could improve upon is, um, you know, I've spoken to Ash at the rail yard, Gail you know, at the Alice Club. We have some properties that you're waiting for this mysterious FEMA money to come take. I think 
Look, you all know more than I know about it. I just know I tried to buy one. I also tried to buy another. Ash just told me a little while ago he's on his way here if he makes it. He was going to try to buy one of the third ones. I don't, well, we don't even know what the numbers were that we were competing against, but it wouldn't have worked for parking lot just for beer warehouse. I think Ash felt the same way. I know the Alice felt the same way. So it's three years and 20 days later, and we're still standing here. But the worst part is we have dilapidated properties that are now fire hazard. They're public works hazard. And now that's where a couple of breaches came in the current creek wall. I'm not worried about looking to the creek for where the water's coming from at this point in our location. I'm watching Baldwin Street because that's where it came from the last time. Now, if those walls had been breached, would it have gotten over Jane Way? It was lacking over it. Most likely, I would say it probably would have come over. I don't know to what degree, but the bulk of that water all came down from breaches further up all um, And it's properties that nobody's going to do a darn thing with. You know, three years ago, I suggested we take those coffin block and run them all the way up the creek deck. If they had been done, we wouldn't have lost property and breaching from last Wednesday. And it's my opinion that the creek would stay in its banks. For the most part, I definitely would have stayed in its banks. It's three years later. All progress has been good. We, we can do other little things immediately to get this a lot safer. Um, that being said, I also have a concern, and I'm Ash and I spoke about this today. You know, we're starting to become a little bit of a blighted area here. Um, I didn't get a tax break, Jenny didn't get a tax break, I'm sure we the rail yard, we put a lot of money in improvements, and nobody speaks higher in this community than I do. I tell anyone who will listen, it's the greatest community I have a business in, and we have them in five. Um, it is really a pleasure to be a part of this. I'll think it from this one thing that needs to be addressed. In light of all this, I mean, we're looking at the fact that if we wanted to do something with our properties, who the heck's gonna buy it? I mean, we talked about 50 year flood, 100 year flood. We're talking about every six weeks. And I love it because I have family members that are like, they don't even know we flooded. Well, we're the first ones to flood. And we're the last ones to get cleaned up. That's fine, I accept that. I think the turnout of people we had down there the other night is evidence of that. And I can't do any more to keep it out of my own property. I mean, it's not like I'm sitting there saying, no, oh, please, someone come solve my problem. I'm all willing to help with it, but there's, I mean, I can't, I can't solve other people's property problems. I think it's about getting arrested quite a bit yet. Uh, and I really would like to know why we don't have a contractor on retainer to clean out these problem sites in the creek when it's occurring. I had somebody down there within 45 minutes of the phone call. Albeit, I knew who to call when to get in there. You either need to find a way to get the right piece of equipment your public works doesn't have the right piece of equipment to do this job. You need an excavator with a thumb. I don't know how you're cleaning the trash bags, but <clears throat> the cost of the piece of equipment over the past year, three years, probably is as much as you've been paying these borough workers to frankly do a job that they're all at risk of, of an injury, a severe injury. So I just don't understand why you don't have one or the other. I will offer up to you that, I mean, my friend did give me a bill. I pleaded with him to give me a bill. I mainly asked him to give me a bill to make a point as to the minimal cost it would be to have someone on retainer with the right equipment to show up while it's happening, not to give some excuse that, oh, there's too much water in the creek, we can't even do it. I go in pick up truck in a chain lap the three years ago. A little smarter than that three years later. There was the right piece of equipment. It's not that much. If you can't afford to have the equipment, then why don't you have someone on retainer because you still need to clean the trash racks anyways. And I think you'd find if you put it out to bid, someone like this guy is most reasonable. And then, um, sorry, but I didn't mean, write this all down. I would never remember it all. Um, we talked about what people in the community have done and neighbors, etc. 
If I'm wrong and this piece of property does not reside in the borough of Bridgeville, stop me right here, but there is someone up on McLaughlin Run Road who I think sells firewood. It's right on the corner, up past the second bridge, by where the little oasis used to be. Is that in the, in the confines of the Bridgeville Borough? Or is that actually on the St. Clair side? No, it's free. Well, I'd like to know who has the lack of respect for their neighbors to allow firewood to be beside a creek where we're trying to keep stuff out. And as Pat pointed out, everyone's all too ready to point their fingers upstream. When we have someone inside these own confines. And if they're not gonna do it on their own, then put an ordinance in place that you're not allowed to do that on this property. And make the fine severe enough that it gets their damn attention. There was plenty of pieces of cut firewood that came down that creek. I'm not saying they plucked it, but they didn't help matters. And had we not got the bigger pieces out, they certainly aren't the type of pieces that make for easy flow. And then the only other question I really have for you all is, you know, at this point, Jenny and I would like to know who to direct some written correspondence to, to take action about. Because I stood up on that bridge and I don't know who was around me, but I, I, I can't do this much longer. I would do anything for anyone down here in this community. All they have to do is ask. But I can't hold Mother Nature back any more than I just did. That's about as good as we get. So I'd just like to know who do we address these concerns so that they're codified? Because it's really kind of unfair for me. Jill and I have had some heated conversations over the past year about the new, you know, exit and egress, ingress and egress that you're going to put at the end of Jane Way. It's designed to occur in height. We talked about this right when you came on board. It was my opinion that it should be higher, about three feet higher. I highly doubt that it's going to be high enough. Again, we were almost weren't high enough last Wednesday. And I would like to formally put these things out to someone because saying no, they talked about it kind of doesn't hold much weight later on down the road. Your comments will be in the record tonight. Okay. And if there's anything else that anyone else obviously needs. Well, Todd, you're going to put it in writing. I mean, I have send it to Joe and they copy all counsel just so you put it all correctly. Yeah, I just, it's just time, guys. You know, it's right, time. I'll try to be constructive about it. I don't want to be someone who's just bitching and moaning, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. If you excuse the language. Okay. But it, it's time. The, the same 10 properties are getting wiped out every single time. Well, yeah. one thing, uh, Mr. Bean, that I can tell you that on our budget time, which only another month, we are really discussing we are really looking for a, different, a bigger thing so we can clean the pressure from the road, but we can go obvious on wet land, you know. So, so we discussed that for the budget. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, the manager already got some prices. And the rest is all engineer work. And we got to, sooner or later, we must make a motion, not tonight, but sooner or later. We're going to make a motion to put all these things in prospect and hire the engineer for quite a bit of work. He's not going to the crash, the trash wreck, we know very well, all of us know that it needs improvement. Every one of us here knows that. Height, size, we know that. And then again, that we have to go to FEMA again, but it has to be done. Well, okay. We have to start the thing. The wheels I think we needed to start somewhere. Thank you. And, and I think we did that. I think yeah. it's a good job. And now it's time to look back and say, all right, we had a pretty significant storm. What went right? What went wrong? All right, how can we make more of those wrong items to what happened right? So, I mean, I wrote every single one of them. And, and as far as the trash, can you lift those? I, that obviously we're going to ask the engineer, but, yeah, sure. you know, number one, I would think they're in there for good, but I don't. I don't know those different things. But what else could we do? Could we make it wider to be able to stop more or things and all those things? But those are the things that now, now that it's happened, all right, we need to relook at it and say, all right, how can we improve it? And I'm right there with you. I mean, I know we're putting a scrupulous eye to everything that I did, and it worked. 
but I also see how close we came to failing. You and I were actually standing there, I think I told you, I don't think we could hold back two, two more inches of water. Um, it was by the grace of God. And the fact that the trash racks do give rise to a potential other bigger problem should they fail. And you guys fought everyone under the sun just to get them to exist. So that's a great start. And again, I, I want to applaud the things that were positive, but I'd be remiss if I didn't point out the things that need addressed. And frankly, the things that are just flat out, why aren't we doing this? And I think there needs to be a sense of urgency and a ticker put on it. Because, look, I raise to them. If I leave it to my kid, he'll engineer pieces for a race car and it'll never see the racetrack. We don't have the luxury of this. That's, that's a fancy. This isn't a fancy. This could have been bad. And with those walls breached, the problem is coming two feet sooner right now. You know, at least can we get concrete blocks along those breaches to keep this dog on the backs. It's, it's a, it's a band-aid. But I'll take a band-aid right now until someone gets around with the, the 307 for a suture. That's all. I mean, I'm always there to try to help with a solution because I don't believe I'm bringing a problem without trying to take it away to solve it. Thank you, Terry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know mean, the ballpark was a was a significant amount of money to do that project. But a lot of that was doing the dirt and lowering the field. I mean the, the, the actual boulders that go in the creek, I mean, are they expensive? So Yeah, I mean they're uh, it was not a cheap project. Right. Um, one of the issues you have I mean, not to dive too deep into the weeds, but uh, the reason it took so long to get them is permits, uh, permits and it impacts the hydraulics of the actual yeah. flow of water. Um, it slows it down. Um, so the height of them, there's magic there because if you make them two foot higher, um, when the debris gets caught up and it backs off the stream, it floods the properties adjacent. Um, right now, it gets within six inches and we couldn't change that. So there's a hydraulic model of everything coming downstream. Um, the storm event that you experienced, the bird itself did not experience a lot of rain um, on, a, on a magnitude scale. Uh, I think as everybody realizes, it all happened upstream. Uh, it was on the scale of 200 year event. Um, the year thing, everybody also is in on that. Well, this has happened five times in 200 years. That's just an engineering terminology. Uh, it could be equivalent to how many inches of rain came down in one hour. Uh, it was three inches uh, an hour is, is what uh, was put out. It's not official yet. There'll be something official that comes out uh, probably in the next month um, that will document that, what happened upstream of, of Bridgeville. But if you have that big wall of water coming down and the trash rack was higher or wider, um, what happens upstream is it pushes it out or it may push it over the banks of the park and then wipe out the park again. Um, because it, there's too much water that can't get past. Now, um, we did talk to Joe today. I'm going to take a look at the models we built um, for everything that happens through the borough. Uh, we do have a draft report. Um, let's give everybody a magnitude of scale, um, something that's going to go to the Planning Commission. But um, I think we talked a year ago, a year and a half ago. Um, my gut feeling was this is a $20 million problem. This is a $20 million problem. Um, can it be addressed? Uh, yes. Does the wall um, probably need to be higher as it comes through and the edges raised? Yes. Um, the solution is going to be recommended in the end is um, not uh, Jersey barriers, not uh, jumbo block, but it's got to be a, a levee wall that's going to be soldier beam lagging concrete that doesn't go over, over time. Doesn't get washed out. It's going to be a permanent structure, kind of like this trash rack. This trash rack had tremendous amount of weight behind it, this wall of water. It built up with debris, you know, six, eight, ten foot high, um, all pushing behind it, but they stay they're filled with concrete, they're embedded. Now it's not saying if we get the five hundred year event and it comes down and it starts eroding, it may rip them out because there's just too much weight there. And that's why he doesn't like them. And engineers don't like them for the most part, because it could create a problem. Now they're is structural and embedded, it's mass concrete. But if you make them wider, now that design changes. Now there's more weight because 
Now instead of the width that we have, it's twice that width and then it's twice the weight. It will force the water towards the park, but the magic is in this, it has to bypass at some point. When that rain event comes, it has to get around and back into the stream. And right now you're kicking it out. I went up and looked at the debris field. It matches pretty close to what the DP is going to want to see. I mean, it's, it's spread out. It's over about 100 feet. Um, it's at the high end. There was sticks and debris and things like that. It washed down, got caught in the trash rack. But the rest of the stuff that creates a problem in the flood is you get all those rocks that come down. It dropped those where the design says it backed it up so the water came down and hit it, kicked into the park, and then it spread it out everywhere. And it spread out about 16 inches thick, roughly, at the top end, and then it dissipated down into the park. So we would want to be very methodical on this. I'm not saying don't look at it, definitely do. Let's look and see what one, one more does, see what it does in the model, and then two, because there's a distance between the two. You notice they're very systematic on how, how they're they're put in place and just see what it does. This is the design that everybody talked about for years. And when we finally did get the permit, we made two tweaks to it to get it. And that was because, I think if I remember right, the original design was straight. The DEP refused to permit that. So these are on an angle so that as the water builds up, it does let water go over the top of it. So, um, so those things in the design can be looked at. Uh, the Jane Way, we do match the the height that's there today. In the end of the day, the final fix, those would get raised up. And whatever height the levee wall is on both sides, um, that's what would get established. The other thing that has to happen in town, um, depending on timing and what design the council's good with, and it's going to take a number of years to build a project of this size, that there's two areas that are like bathtubs, Baldwin Street um, uh, need screw pumps. We have them in a few other communities. They were put in in the 70s after Hurricane Agnes. They moved a tremendous amount of water quickly. Um, so on Baldwin Street, you, put, you have to have redundancy in case you lose power. They have to have emergency generator that it pumps the water from the catch basin system and from what's falling in that area up over the wall that's been built. So step one on the lowest part of town is get the wall built, and then you have screw pumps below this building on the bottom side of town, you pump up over uh, the wall and that keeps water in the stream. The second part of town is Baldwin Street, we do the same thing, we repeat it. Um, there is some structures that need changed. Um, you know, the county bridge, there's a pier in the middle, it's problematic. If you run the hydraulics, it says it's okay, but experience tells everybody here, just what we just heard testimony, it's a problem. Stuff builds up in it, you gotta yank it out of there. So functionally, it's an issue, so that, that needs to be addressed. Barrow is going to ask again that the county replace that bridge so that it can pass the flow. Um, upstream, the other bridge is the same one, the one on Baldwin Street. It needs to go, it needs to be higher. Um, it catches debris when it does, it kicks the water out and it goes in a very irregular pattern and then you can't control it. You can't keep it within the stream. So if you spend the money on the walls, you got to spend the money on the bridge and then you fix it. So that'll be within the, the study and it is in the study. Um, and then as you get upstream, you eventually get to where water can stay within the stream because downstream it's getting funneled through and um, it gets to the uh, back channel. The back channel well always need, needs to be maintained. We just, we just talked. When it gets a gravel bar there, it got to go away. We've got to get rid of it because if the gravel bar exists, it backs water up into the stream channel, the velocity decreases and then it just gets worse upstream and then the model doesn't work. So over time, you do always got to have a maintenance component to whatever, whatever you build um, with each piece. Um, and part of that is equipment or contracts and just making sure you have those in place. So um, it is baby steps. steps. It is very expensive. Um, I do think it's pretty good timing to have a study completed of. Um, it doesn't help with the current flooding situation, but I think it's going to be a fairly good uh, grant opportunity year um, to start this process and start a phased project. And, I kind of look at this as one of those projects where if you can get phase one funded, the likelihood of getting phase two and then phase three and then phase four funded goes up dramatically because you get the first piece uh, funded. You were very successful in the last two years of getting all these first projects funded and the last 
piece of that at JM Street that's going to get uh, constructed here in the next next week um, to get that piece done. And that was really just a piece for access, so that it's immediate access when the flood goes away to get things cleaned up. You don't have that today. You got to move stuff, and it's, it's difficult. So, um, so that should address that. We kind of have the same plan for Maple Maple Street. That also has a problem with water come back up. You have the ramp there. Um, that same system needs put in there eventually, but there's no reason to do that until after the downstream stuff is, is accomplished. So, um, but uh, we have worked last year, did everybody's problems on paper, uh, went through the model, went through a bunch of different versions, a bunch of different options. We looked at a tunnel going all the way through what you talked before. Um, those things work, but not as good as actually just permitting walls and widening the shrink. Um, it does have property takes along the way. There's a couple different versions um, within that study. Um, it shows Baldwin Street being narrowed a little bit, um, uh, showing Baldwin Street not being connected. Um, but you'll have some options to look at as council to say uh, which one makes the most sense for, uh, for the birth. Uh, so um, but I, I think what everybody observed is currently what the model will show us. And that's what I had John who worked on the model who works with Joe uh, closely. Um, he lives out in this area. He came out the next morning. He looked at how all the water flowed based on the data we had on the storm event. Uh, it happened the way if we put it in the model. Um, the water levels and stuff were pretty close to what we would expect. Um, the water did basically back up on the ball as was described. Um, and not a, a through event, like, you, like if it's the rain came here, um, it was more of a backup event. And that's what the news showed. They showed the water was stacked. Up. It was raising, there was no running. I know. The water did not back up in the Baldwin. The water came from a breach of three places along the creek. And if you want, I can show you a video to prove it. Uh, uh, the water breach. did not come from the storm drain, it did not come up from underneath. But not. I have some pumps in, they never even turned on because. But it did come from the upper Baldwin all the way down like the last event. Mm -hmm. So. Oh. Right. I lived it. I understand. So. You're talking about upper bowl. But it was just sitting. I had the Jet Shack guys the next day tell me they were looking for a clog in the drains that they couldn't find. But after there it wasn't a clog in the drains. The water didn't come from the drains. But after it breached, it just sat. The water didn't work out because it showed. Show. There's no rat flow prevented at the bottom of Jane Way because it wasn't put in properly. So, so there is one put in it. Put it. But the backflow preventers in our basement worked and actually took the water away <coughs> yep. even when there was five feet of water outside. That's why I was amazed that they didn't even have to have my sump pumps turn on. Yes, now one thing on that too, the, the backflow preventers yourself, phone, we have to make sure everybody knows, they need checked after events like this because yeah, the next event, they may, they may not work, they need clean. Yes. So there is a maintenance component to those also because if they're not maintained, if it happens rain after rain event after rain event, then you do, do have issues there. So. I mean, with all due respect, I don't know how many years we're talking about, but I'm sure it's not in my lifetime. My concrete coffin blocks worked, and they, they would get you somewhere until the grandiose plan could be done for a pittance of money. I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I've also seen those get removed, float downstream, and go through somebody's house. I so, concrete blocks. yes, I've seen uh, cement trucks float downstream in a flood that creates a huge issue. So, no disrespect to what you're saying, you're not going to see us engineer that and put that out on the street. That can be the solution that somebody uses uh, with the amount of water that comes down uh, a block and run, especially in a 200 year event. So, we will agree to disagree that the borough would have that be their solution. It, it's not going to come out of us as an engineer. So if you want to put that on your property, by all means do. But that's not something that we're going to recommend to the board. Again, I would look at the creek number for flooding. I'm looking at the street. So. <coughs> Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Proceed with that. We're in the regular meeting, please. Um, our new business item one: a motion to approve the June 14th, 20. 21 regular meeting minutes as submitted. So moved. I'll second it. Uh, Mr. Gilanucci and uh, uh, BJ. Mr. Snucker. All in favor?
favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two, a motion to approve the July 2021 bill list. I'll move. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. A motion to approve the July 16, 23, 30th, and August 6, 2021 papers. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Number four, a motion to adopt ordinance number 1022, an ordinance of the borough of Bridgeville, amending its code of ordinances, chapter 15, motor vehicles and traffic, part four, general parking regulations, subsection 15-402, Parking prohibited at all times in certain locations, and part 11 of fire lanes, subsection 15 1101, designated fire lanes and tow away zones to establish a fire lane in a prohibited parking area in a designated location on McMillan Street. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number five, a motion to authorize the execution of a contract by and between the Borough of Bridgeville and Traffic Planning and Design Incorporated for professional services, including the preparation of an active transportation plan in accordance with the RFP issued in the paper and the work plan submitted by this firm. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. For six, this bid opening was on Friday after the agenda was put out. Uh, there was a number of bids received. The lowest bid received was from G. Salandro Excavating LLC, and the amount of that bid was $151,795. So six, a motion to award contract to G. Salandro Excavating LLC in the amount of $151,795 for the Chartier's Park Stream Restoration Project. I'll move. Second. Second. Any questions on the motion? I do have a question on the motion. Is that going to help anything with any type of flooding, or is that just the restoration? No, this is the uh, section of roadway right. stream bank that's been eroded no, since no, no. Hurricane Ivan. Right. 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 Yeah. right, but is there anything that we can do that would help with any flooding within that project? Well, no, it's the project to restore what was eroded and put the road back. And then this also completes grading uh, for the new playground. It will go adjacent to shelter. Have these guys not worked for us before, or is this somebody new in the area? They do a fair amount of this type of work in the area. Um, they have a number of contracts that have been passed. We can with them, so. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number seven, a motion to authorize the execution of change order number six for the McLaughlin Run Park improvement projects that resulted in a decrease of $16,336.86 to reflect field measured final in place quantities. I need the motion, so moved. Second. Any question in the motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion. motion carries. Thank you. Number eight, a motion to authorize the disbursement of $25,181.51 from the capital project fund to Scratty Site Development Paving Company for partial payment number five of the McLaughlin Run Park Improvement Projects. Second. Second? No, second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Number nine, a motion to authorize the first of $17,987.65 from the Campbell Project Fund to Jet Jack Incorporated for partial payment number two of the bulk of the Bower Hill Road Stormwater Improvements Project. Second. 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 Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number 10. A motion to authorize the disbursement of $9,907.08 from the sewer fund to Jet Jack Incorporated for partial payment number three of the backwater valve contract phase three project. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 
11. The motion to authorize the disbursement of $56,679.30 from the capital project fund to SNN Industries LLC for invoice number 1797 of the, of the Bridgeville Municipal Building Roof Replacement Project. So moved. Second? Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number 12. A motion to walk to uh, excuse me, a motion to concur with and direct the Charlotte West <coughs> Council of Governments to authorize payment of thirty thousand four hundred and eighty-seven dollars and eighty-seven cents to Independent Enterprises Incorporated for partial payment number one of the ADA ramp and sidewalk improvement projects. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number thirteen. A motion to accept and pay any commission due. For the June 2021 real estate tax collector report. I'll move. Second? Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion here. Number 14, a motion to acknowledge receipt of the May 2021 treasurer's report. I'll move. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion here. Number 15, a motion to accept the June 2021 police report. So moved. Second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Yes, Mr. Chief. Committee reports. Administration. Virginia? I have nothing this month. Okay. We'll leave that for finance. Thank you. Any questions for uh, the chamber members? Finance, Mr. Reducci. Uh, we had uh, been uh, going through a process, well, excuse me, not we, Joe, been going through a process on the, all the documentation that needs to be submitted for the American Recovery Act Fund and the funds that are uh, submitted for Bridgeville. Uh, we were able to receive half of those, and, and to be honest with you, I couldn't believe it when Joe told me, but we already have those funds. So uh, kudos to him on getting things moving because I, to my understanding, there are some municipalities that are still waiting. So thank you, Joe, for your diligence on the paperwork. Uh, I hate to say it, but the uh, school and uh, borough taxes are going to be mailed out this week. You might actually have already received your bills. Uh, yes, that's good. Got it. You're gone? Yeah, today is good. Uh, the GEDF grants uh, for the Byerville Storm Sewer Project and the McLaughlin uh, Run Flood Drive, um, contract extensions uh, were extended through the end of the year to close out the project. So, uh, but the grants are expiring uh, by June 30th. So we're we were looking to do that. Joe, did we get that extension? I yes. Said, yeah. Uh, and uh, looking at our uh, budget to actual in regards to uh, halfway through, uh, we're doing pretty good. Uh, obviously, the general fund uh, uh, is lower, but it's expected because uh, the tax bills just went up. So we're, we're doing well as far as the expenditures. Uh, we do have a couple things down, which for obvious reasons, the merc mercantile and the business privilege taxes are down due to the pandemic but the sewer fund and the trash fund are uh, right where we're expecting them to be. So as far as the uh, financials, we're, we're uh, right where we need to be uh, after six months uh, of the calendar year. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Verducci. Anything for, for our finance chairman? Park and Recreation. Joe, you want to say something? You yeah, I'm here. Real quick, the uh, Black Run Park, almost completely finished. Uh, we ripped that the first shovel uh, level on June 19th, and the park is up and running. As far as I know, I've heard there wasn't any damage from the park in the park itself, so we got a little bit left in there, as far as I know. Uh, as far as the uh, Churchill Park uh, did open, uh, we're doing the uh, work on the street, the bank down there, plus the excavation with the space for the new playground. Paving work will be done in next, next spring. I think we we're trying to tie that in with the, uh, the paving contract. Uh, hopefully, by maybe next fall, the Chargers Park should 
Thank you, Joe. Uh, I'm glad to see you over here. I wish you a speedy recovery. So we can have a couple of dreams. <laughs> I'll see you, Joe. Thank you. Anything for parts? Joe's been in the hospital, so uh, it was nice for him to appear into our meeting. Thank you, Joe. Okay, anything else for parts? Uh, public work, it's me actually, some of the things have been addressed already, some have left the roof and the parts and so forth, and all of you got the, uh, the report. And I don't have anything else other than thank you all the volunteer for the uh, uh, help on the uh, flood, and uh, Tommy make a lot of good, he always does, he makes a lot of good suggestions. And we, some of those, it's in ASAP for us council to get together with the manager and the council and the engineer. And I hope that we could do that soon. Uh, at least let's start, as Mr. Producer said, we'll start something. Thank you. Uh, public safety? There are no reports, sir. Honor Mayor, Mrs. Copeland. I received a call from Alan Pettit on Carroll Avenue. He said he was very impressed and grateful for the flood green response. And on June, July 1st, I presented a proclamation to LaBella Bean for their 20 years in business. They were very happy, fortunately for me. Um, Councilman Chiselski happened to be there and he participated and took pictures of my presentation to Deb Massetti, who was surprised and very grateful for our acknowledging their presence in Bridgeville. From the Bridgeville Community Association, with heartfelt thanks, the Bridgeville Fourth of July decorating contest was small, but an overall success. We appreciate your commitment to add some fun into our Bridgeville neighborhoods. Congratulations to the winners of the 2021 contest. First prize, John Schneider, 681 Elm Street. Second, the Morocco family, 229 Hall Street. Third, Denise Sarnowski, 2235 Ramsey Avenue. If you have any recommendations or comments for future 4th of July contests, please let us know. They would be greatly appreciated. Again, thank you for adding to the community and let's make next year bigger and better. Sincere former Mayor Pat DeBlasio and the Bridgeville Community Association. Thank you. Anything for the mayor, thank you, Madam Mayor. Please, Chief Chad. Thank you, Vice President. Um, I provide the written report if there's any questions. I'm sure I can provide answers to it, and other than that, I don't have anything. Anything for the Chief Police? Thank you. Now we have a Mr. Legal person up in here. Oh, thank you. I don't, I don't have anything to add to my Thank you, sir. Anything for us, Elizabeth? Our engineer, Kevin? Uh, we did send in our report dated July 8th. The only update I have is the really Barbara Road is scheduled for this week to be in the repairs. That will be the last item for the paper. <coughs> there's a lot of people on so yes there is <coughs> it was a little rough so, yeah. hopefully that helps That's for the short term. i hope we can uh, revisit you real fast on some of the things we discussed tonight Absolutely. i certainly hope that we assume yeah. thank you uh okay fire chief yeah, last month we had 23 calls. <clears throat> and also, my me and my uh, half the fire department would thank all the uh, everybody else for helping out with the flood, all the other fire departments that were called in, helping to pump out detail, help with the road closures and the uh, cleanup procedure. Also, ask the public to, when you're out there in these floods, um, just to keep in mind of everything around you and just some of the problem areas, like I said, the trash rack, they were like, people like to gather, just be very cautious, be aware, try to stay away from it. 
because God forbid something does happen, we don't need another secondary issue. So just try to stay away from the areas and uh, be courteous to everybody out there because we're trying to do the best we can to get the town you know, safe as we can, everybody evacuated and the uh, process cleaned up as soon as we can. And that's all I have. Anything for the front chief? Thank you. Country GMS. Uh, Mr. Miller. Uh, a library, and you represent from the library, Mrs. Copeland, you have anything from the uh, library? You usually uh, some for the historical society. Mm -hmm. the next. Okay. Uh, anything, anybody from parking authority? When are we going to put some pressure on parking authority to even though they send us uh, some papers uh, to every representative over here, uh, or uh, have a, uh, a quarter, two to two times a year, to have a meeting with them. Uh, I, I've been saying this for years and years and years. Uh, they, they never have. I mean, it, it, it's, it's very important that we meet with them couple of times a year, just in a formal way, public, and, and uh, so the, the question to be answered, and the things happen every day, with their raising the money, and this and that, that we, we find out mostly from, from, the, from the rest of it, that we don't find out from that. I think it's very improper what they do. But anyway, Let's try, let's try to have a meeting with them on the council and the public, open formal meeting. And so I can say, uh, Bridgeville Planning Commission, Madam. Well, we have my report from yes. the June meeting, and yes. outside of the fact that we're coming up with another, we're having another meeting July 26th which everybody's welcome to attend because I think it'll be interesting. So, Mr. Dover, do you have anything to add to it? What she said. <laughs> Thanks. Are you doing it in a Zoom meeting or are you doing oh, it yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Same format as council. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you have the option. Uh, for our manager? Beyond my written report, just a reminder that the household has this uh, Recycling event for uh, computers, TVs, paint, and what have you is uh, August 7th at the fire station. So we encourage the community to take attention. Thank you. Anything for a I have one thing. Um, <clears throat> Joe, kudos to you in regards to giving us such a detailed report of, of what happened. Um, these are just things written down that we can look back and say, all right, what again, what, what can we do differently? So. Thank you very much for putting this together. Mr. Chairman, are you still there? Anything from you, sir? No, no, again, I apologize for having to demonstrate but uh, thank you, thank you all, and then uh, come. My, your heartfelt comments about what you're going through down there. Uh, every one of us here do what we can now do for this. We appreciate your your eye on that situation at all times and, and sharing the information with them. This is the best we paint for the world. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, no business, anybody? I do have a few questions. Um, I didn't really get the opportunity to ask questions or asked you earlier. I know um, we had a lot happen on July 7th, a lot of opportunities for things we could fix, things that recognize it went well. Um, several members of the community brought things to my attention and several of them are here that brought it to our attention today. So I do thank you guys for coming in. Um, there are a lot of concerns that we can expedite with simple, like some people would say, band-aids. Um, we 
appreciate those opportunities to see what those could be as far as not just looking for those five year, 10 year, 20 year programs, 20 million dollar programs. We need things done now. We need the opportunities to find those. Um, breaching on Baldwin Street is unacceptable. Breaching this unsealed walls on Maple Street to me is unacceptable. Not finishing the wall on Maple Street, unacceptable. Uh, I know those are figured out when you do your job properly. I know you put a lot of effort, the team puts a lot of work into it. And I do appreciate that. But these are people's lives continuously. This is my life. This is this borough's life, livelihood. Um, our community is crying, and we continue to cry. And we need to start looking at quicker routes to help our community members as opposed to pushing them off five years, 10 years. I know it took a lot of effort by everybody sitting up here, Joe Cower, Lori, Michael Tomer, former council members, former mayors, but we are looking like a dump site for water from our surrounding communities, and I, for one, am not pleased. Thank you. Thank you, young man. We all seem to sense so I'm going to get. Uh, any other questions? Make a motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 We adjourn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.